So uh, I'm gonna move on to how the whole thing works. Uh, you know, having uh, heard about the history of, of the biogas. Um, uh, the other thing that I need to say is that in the whole district, this must be the only one in the whole district because the technology is really new. Uh, uh, and um, I th uh, my hope is that uh, government officials will uh, copy this and maybe uh, fund uh, the whole project uh, and you know transfer it to many parts of Uganda. Um, the, the other important thing about the digester is the, the, the environment. In, in Europe, um, I'm sure you are aware that unless people uh, come together uh, you know, and uh, protect the environment, uh, the, the young generation is going to suffer uh, because uh, you have so many factories in your country. Um, you know, the, the UN the environmental body has designed something about the um, is it carbon footprint, uh, uh, carbon trading, carbon trading. Um, so, but that, that that hasn't really materialized in in, in so many ways. Um, but we, well, particularly you, the young people, need to seriously think about the environment. Uh, trees are being cut down in Africa uh, for charcoal. Uh, and that is not really sustainable. Um, but also the whole process has uh, a bearing on the, on the health of people. So, you know, particularly ladies who are always in the kitchen, they are using the charcoal. Charcoal, the, you know, the, the, the CO2 that comes out of the charcoal is not good for our lungs. So you get disease out of, you know, using the charcoal. Uh, but also the whole process takes too long to prepare a meal, to, to, to have food on table. It just t takes hours and hours. <coughs> but also the environment is affected. So we need something. We need technologies that can actually protect uh, the environment. And I think, I think this would be um, an answer to it. Uh, uh, I've been approached by so many people, you know, saying, if we don't have cows, can we have a biodigester? Yes, it is possible, but uh, we, society needs to be organized in such a way that the, the, you know, the feeding process would be sorted out. Anything green, in theory, uh, would work with the biodigester. So anything you see here that is green, if it's chopped into small pieces, you mix it with water, it would produce the biogas. All you need to do is to introduce the bacteria uh, now and then into the into the digester, because the, the whole process uh, is sort of a fermentation uh, kind of thing. So you need bacteria to do that job. So the, the energy, the biogas that comes out of here is really done by bacteria, by bacterial activity. So you need to introduce uh, bacteria into the system now and then. But that doesn't have to be done on a daily basis. You can do it once a month. Uh, and then you can use algae. You can use um, uh, banana peelings if you chop them down and mix it with water. Uh, you know, it would still work. And in Africa, Africa is very green. So there is no shortage uh, of the materials to feed the digester. All is needed is the knowledge um, and also people being organized. Uh, organization is a big, big problem in Africa, and we really need to struggle with our society to, to be organized. Yeah. So I move on to the, a bit of a technical side to it, um, uh, of how the, the, the whole thing works. Uh, you have sort of three chambers. Uh, you have the feeding chamber, so where you mix the cow dung, all the stuff that would go into the digester. Uh, is fat, you know you mix it uh, from the um, the feeding chamber um, and then you mix it with water but you have to make sure that it's not rainwater because um, some of the chemicals I think in the rain uh, affects the bacterial activity um, so you, you 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 make sure that you get uh, water that is not rainwater uh, for mixing so that's the mixing chamber so you um, and the, the, the mixing chamber, the size of the mixing chamber uh, depends on uh, the size of the digester. 
Uh, so th there are different sizes, but this, the, the, fat, the smallest one is a six cubic uh, meter uh, digester. So if you want, just for cooking, uh, and maybe one store cooking for uh, three hours, and then one light for three hours. So you can just build a six uh, cubic meter one. So that's the smallest. Uh, then maybe the second one is a nine cubic meter, uh, which is this one. So with a nine cubic meter uh, digester, uh, you have one stove cooking for six hours. So you can cook, you can have gas for cooking for six hours. Uh, and then you have two lights uh, between three and five hours. Uh, but we, you know, th this one has worked far, far better than I had expected because we've been using the lights for more than three hours. So depending on how much gas you use for cooking, you can actually have lights going on for six, six, seven hours uh, a night. So, so that's a nine cubic meter one. Then you can have a 12 cubic meter one, which would provide you with two stoves uh, running for six hours and then four lights uh, running for uh, three, between three and six hours. So the bigger the digester, the more things you can, uh, you, 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 you can have uh, in the house. Um, you can also have a fridge, by the way, uh, if you get a, a, a paraffin uh, fridge. So you just convert uh, the paraffin I think then you just increase the, the size of the pipe and then you, you run a fridge of the biogas. The only thing you can't you know, use is you know, a TV or whatever, but there are options that I will talk about uh, afterwards. So, th so the bigger the, the digester, the more things you can use. But that means the more stuff you need uh, to, 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 to mix up. So with a nine, a nine cubic meter one, you mix about 15 kilos, between 15 and 20 kilos of cow dung. But if you build a 12 cubic meter one, you would need, you would need probably to double that, maybe 30 kilos, between 30 and 50 kilos of, of, of cow dung. So before you decide uh, on, on the size of the digester, you have to think about uh, the feeding uh, you know, how much do you have? If you have fewer cows, you can't really, it will be quite hard to, uh, to feed the digester, a bigger digester. So you have to think about the feeding process before you decide uh, on, on the size of the digester. But also you have to think about the size of the family. So if it's a big house uh, and, you know, you have a big family, then a smaller digester wouldn't do for you. So you, you need to think how many people are we in the house uh, in order to decide uh, you know, the, the size of the digester. So the decision is made, um, uh, you, know, you have to think about two things, the, the, the feeding uh, stuff that you've got, but also the size of the family. Uh, but because uh, my family is quite small, a, a, a nine cubic meter one is more than enough and it's, it's served us very well. No. We've been able to, you know, have the food we need uh, and the lights we need, yet we are quite a big family now. So, uh, ideally, uh, if I was to advise the government which size of the digester to build all over Uganda, it would be in, in, in between a nine and a 12 uh, cubic meter one. Anything bigger than that creates problems because you need more staff to feed, to feed it. But this is quite reasonable. A any family can have access to 15 kilos or 20 kilos of cow dung or any green stuff to chop up and mix. So it's not, it wouldn't be a problem at all for any family to, to, to get enough uh, feeding <coughs> stuff to, to go into the digester. So that's the feeding. Then um, there is something that you can't see, which is dome shaped and, and quite big. Um, which is the actual digester. So the actual digester is here where this <coughs> um, And what we have down here is a, a nine cubic uh, meter uh, digester. And above it, it's got the gas chamber. So, so that's the main digester. So from the feeding um, chamber, we have a pipe uh, going below ground, uh, connected to the actual digester. 
I'll explain you know the, the distance between uh, the, the feeding uh, the, the feeding pipe uh, going into the actual digester. So that's that's the second chamber, and then we have uh, we we have here what is called. Yeah, so this is uh, the, the, the expansion chamber, uh, uh, but here we call it a pump, so it's sort of a natural pump. Uh, so the stuff that has already produced the gas uh, comes here, but it comes here after um, the gas has been produced. So uh, once you feed there, the, the, the space uh, above the, 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 the digester, the gas chamber, the, the, other, the, the stuff that you fed into uh, the feeding chamber pushes the gas up uh, and then it gets pushed into this chamber. So the, 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 the stuff that is inside here has already produced the gas. Um, so, uh, and this is, not, this is not too deep, it's only uh, 45 centimeters from, from the ground. Uh, on the map, uh, on the plan there, uh, you have uh, that's the that's the feeding chamber, uh, and that's the actual digester uh, with the gas chamber on top. So there is a, a, a gap. This um, uh, mixed um, stuff doesn't actually go up to the top. It leaves a bit of a gap for the gas. Uh, and then you have this uh, expansion chamber uh, here, and then you know the the outlet. So you can actually measure how much gas you've got by um, uh, getting a stick and you know putting it down. Um, so it's only 45 centimeters from the bottom. So once the gas has been used, this stuff goes down. Uh, so you, that would tell you that you need to to feed. Uh, so but but inside the house there is a gas meter, so you can also install a gas meter to tell you how much gas you've got left. So when you are preparing food, you are actually aware that gas is running out and that's the time you come and feed uh, the, 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 the digester. So, so three, three, three chambers really to it.